I must admit that I've been quietly concerned about looking inside the fuel tank because I knew the fuel tank wasn't completely full and over the cool winter months we did of course run the risk of condensation forming inside the walls of the tank and we all know the diesel bug likes to live in that separation layer between the diesel and the water. As of yesterday, the 19th of March 2020, Greece has announced a month-long shutdown uh, for vessels um, coming into ports or onto Greek moorings. So it looks like we are definitely going to be here at the boatyard for at least another month due to the effects of the virus around the world. The silver lining, of course, is that it does give us more time to put more ticks on the boat jobs list of <laughs> things completed. Um, but of course, you know, um, we don't know what will happen at the end of the month. Will there be another month added to that? Um, so at the moment we're just playing it by ear really. Taking it day by day like everybody. Yeah. Yeah. We're pretty isolated here, but it's a lovely area to be isolated in, I have to say. Yeah. And, um, you know, we have noticed in town that the uh, restaurants and bars, um, places where people can gather, uh, are now closed. Supermarket, pharmacy, butcher, baker, they're still open. Schools um, are closed. Schools are closed. Museums are closed. Yeah. yeah. Basically, any places where people can gather are uh, in, in shutdown. Yeah. So, um, we'll continue with our boat jobs and um, we'll give, give you an update post. when we know something more. Yeah, and uh, in the meantime, let's all stay healthy and safe. Yeah, and wash your hands. <laughs> The internet is a wonderful thing for doing research and getting advice and last night after we finished doing what we were doing on our list yesterday we went back to the apartment and I put a question up onto the Chanot owners Facebook group uh, regarding the uh, uncoupling of the prop shaft from the gearbox. Well it turns out there's going to be a lot more huffing and puffing and swearing in here today because we do have to decouple the uh, flange as well because apparently there's a, a nut in there and also uh, a keyway so um, <clears throat> time to break out the big spanners and the big hammer <laughs> wish me luck okay so that's the flange disconnected now what we've got to do is we've got to get this pulled out enough so we can get at the back of the flange where apparently there is a nut and then we've got to get the prop uh, in the right position uh, for the, uh, I think it's called a keyhole or something. But anyway, so let's let's give this a go and see if we can actually move this, this out now. Oh yes, look at the diff distance it's moved already. Oh wow. And that okay. hardly took any effort. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going with that. Remember, we've got to give ourselves enough distance to be able to work on the back end of that flange uh, and see what we're actually working with. Okay, that shifted a lot. The flange has now probably come up against the uh, yeah. uh, stone gland, so it's back inside and we'll have a look at what we've got. There's nothing in there. Okay. That I can see. So would it be this? If you've been following our last couple of videos then you'll know we've been putting this product Brilliant through its paces on some really tough jobs and so far we haven't been able to defeat it. Today we're going to put it to the ultimate test. We've done pretty much all the cleaning we can uh, with the other products we have of the engine bay bilge area uh, to get rid of all that oily soot that came out of the broken exhaust elbow and the final clean today we're going to put uh, this stuff on and see what it comes up like. And she's already started. Yeah, well this area was sooty because it was underneath the prop shaft and um, it's already coming up roses. 
All right, well, let's carry on there and see how, how good it gets. Oh, and just on a side note, we've decoupled the flange from the gearbox, uh, but unfortunately, this is still uh, not wanting to budge and move. Uh, we have taken a photograph in there. Uh, it is lined up with the keyhole. There is no other nut and bolt in there. So we're going to get Giuliano over at two o'clock to find out, you know, what, uh, what we're missing. Might be something totally obvious to him, but not to us. When Baz and I looked at the completely soot-filled engine bay, we didn't think it would ever, ever come clean. As you can see, the engine fills most of the compartment and it's quite a confined space. So getting to a lot of the areas uh, required us to do a lot of stretching and um, getting into all sorts of contortionist shapes. So we haven't needed to do any yoga lately. <laughs> because we've been getting our exercise just cleaning out the bilge and the engine bay um, but I think when you have a look at it you'll agree with me how good it looks compared to how it looked when we first started. We've put in lots and lots of hours and we've also used that fantastic product Brilline to get the final shine on the bilge and even the engine is looking a lot better than it did. I don't think it will ever be perfectly clean but this is good. This is one part of the coupling that attaches the prop shaft to the back end of the gearbox and the prop shaft goes in there and has six bolts here, 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 here. Now the reason why we couldn't get the prop shaft out was because we didn't know at the time but this also needs unscrewing because the prop shaft when it's aligned properly has a, a key that goes into that groove but it also has, in the, in, in the top of the prop shaft, it has a dimple. And that dimple sits right underneath that, where this screw goes in. And that's why we couldn't remove the prop shaft, no matter how hard we tried. The minute we took this out, hey presto, prop shaft popped out easy as pie. So, lesson learned there. Mm. I did have a feeling it had something to do with that screw, didn't I? You did. Okay. You're in position? Yeah. Now the next job is to get this Volvo uh, stern gland uh, off the, the back end here and then we can uh, find out exactly what part number it is and go from there. Oh, it's as easy as that. <laughs> <laughs> so again we'll clean up that bit there, we'll find out exactly what diameter that is there and uh, we'll get this replaced. Yeah. So this part number is the Volvo Penta 828416. So at least now we've got it off, we can order the right part. Yeah. Another win! <laughs> <laughs> it feels good to be moving forward. Yeah. The parcel tracking site has told me that one of the parts has arrived in Greece, that's probably going to be the Volvo stern gland, and we're still waiting for a tracking notification for the cutlass bearing. So as soon as those two are here, then we can put everything back together in that section and replace the exhaust and, and turbo system on the engine and hopefully sign off on that particular job section. By a boat, they said, it'll attract lots of pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I like ginger pussies. <laughs> oh, look, it's happy there. We might have a new pet. No, we haven't. Well, here I am in the starboard aft cabin, and this is where the diesel fuel tank lives. We carry 205 litres of diesel in a stainless steel tank. Now, to be able to look inside the tank, there is a big access panel, uh, but I would have to take some of this plywood away that is the base of the bed. Uh, what I'm going to do first is there is a little section here where the tank fuel gauge sender unit lives, and that's only held in by five. Uh, big belts really. Um, so I'm going to take those off first, shine a torch in there, have a see what it looks like and uh, if it's good then we don't need to go any further. If it's bad then we need to take a lot more things apart. Just to make sure I reconnect these cables correctly I put a blue marker pen on that side and a blue marker pen here so I know that this one has to go here therefore the other one has to go there.
Let's have a closer look inside that hole. Well, I can see the bottom of the tank, uh, and it doesn't look sludgy. Problem is, this bit here will be the deepest part of the tank, and I can't see the bottom. Uh, so it's impossible to know what's going on in there. Could well be that we've got to take the big inspection panel off. The job just got bigger. So here's the top of the tank exposed, and here is the big inspection panel. There's another one further back as well, but uh, this is the one we're interested in. Also just learned that our tank capacity is only 200 litres, not 205 as we suspected. You live and learn. So I've cleaned around this area to make sure there's no dust and filth and bits and pieces. And uh, then I'm going to undo all these bolts, take this off, have a good look inside, see what the condition of the diesel is. And hopefully all should be good. I'm also quite surprised how loose these nuts actually are. I mean, that's it, and it's undone. That's it. So obviously, you don't need to over tighten these at all. I'm going to guess the liquid gasket does most of the work. So here we are with the inspection panel off. You can see they've used a heck of a lot of that rubber liquid gasket to seal it properly. So let's have a look at the tank itself. Shining into the deepest parts, still very difficult to see. And this is a uh, scuba diving torch, so what I might do is I might actually get the torch in there and go right down to the deepest part of the tank. I must admit that I've been quietly concerned about looking inside the fuel tank because I knew the fuel tank wasn't completely full and over the cool winter months we did of course run the risk of condensation forming inside the walls of the tank and then running down and then running into the diesel and forming a separation layer and we all know the diesel bug likes to live in that separation layer between the diesel and the water I stuck the torch in there, the dive torch in there it is pristine clean, there is no growth, there is no dirt, there is no nothing so, great news I've sealed the inspection hatch back up. Now what I can do is I can use those additives that we bought and put them into the fuel tank and then once we've got all those additives in there, including a biocide, we will fill up the tanks uh, manually by doing runs to the local petrol station with our jerry cans. So let's move on to the next phase. Now it's time to put the additives into the fuel tank before we top it off with diesel. Now you may remember that earlier on this year when we had the rental car we went to the north of the island to a boatyard where we ordered the a new uh, exhaust mixing elbow. While we were there we bought several other things and one thing in particular is this diesel system cleaner K. This one litre container is enough to put into 300 litres of fuel. So to make it stretch a little bit longer we're going to put 500 mil of this, exactly half, into our 200 litres of fuel and this will clean the injectors and the fuel system and everything else that it can get its little fingers on. So that's that stuff. We did also buy this biocide and um, this one is particularly strong. This is again a one litre container and we only need 200 mil of this for every 200 litres of fuel. But we're not going to use that one. We're going to use this one. This is the older of the two. This has been kicking around the boat for about a year now. And so, again, for this one, we need 200 mil for 200 litres of fuel. So we're going to put these additives in, and then we're going to do a fuel run and top off the tank, and then we can tick a job off the list 100% done. So excited. The fuel in these jerry cans has been living on the side rails for the last 12 months and it is still good and can probably stay there for a little bit longer but I just felt it would be just better in the overall scheme of things to use this first to top off the tank and then take these into the petrol station and then uh, once the tank is full we'll fill up both of these again so they've got fresh diesel in them and strap them back to the side of the, uh, the rails. Time for a motorbike ride. Well, we got to 100 litres of extra fuel put into the fuel tank and it started to sound a little bit full. So now I've refilled the jerry cans once again up to 20 litres each and strapped them once again to the side rails. So I think that job is one we can certainly 100% tick off the list. Still plenty more to go though. Stay tuned. 
And remember, if you want a more detailed and in-depth look into the jobs that we're doing, and in particular that one with the fuel, how much did it all cost, you can check out all the details on our weekly blogs on our website, which is on screen right now. If you've enjoyed this video, do give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and ding that bell so that you get notified of future video updates. And if you want to support us further, you might want to have a look at Patreon and see the different tiers and the benefits that you can gain as a patron. Thanks for watching and see you next time.